Today I'm continuing my series on solving math, astronomy and astrophysics Olympiad questions. Let's get stuck into it. Okay, so this is from the IOAA 2019 paper and it's question three. I have released a video on question two, so if you're interested then check that out, but we're focusing on question three today. So the problem is around the supermassive black hole in the centre of the Milky Way galaxy and M87. And it says, the first image of a black hole was constructed recently by the international team of the Event Horizon Telescope, EHT. The imaged area surrounds the supermassive black hole in the centre of the galaxy, M87. The observations resulting in the final image were carried out at a wavelength of lambda equal to 1.3 millimetres, where the interstellar extinction is not prohibitively large. Now, immediately from, from reading this, we're given that the wavelength that it was carried out at was 1.3 millimetres. Now, this is something, we'll call this number one, and this is the first thing that jumps out straight away when we read this, is this is going to come in handy. So part A says, how large an instrument would be needed to resolve the shadow in effect the photon capture radius, which is three times the size of the event horizon of a supermassive black hole in the centre of a galaxy. Express result as a function of the distance d and the mass m of the black hole. So again, the things that jump out to me would be that we want to resolve the shadow, that's the most important part of the question, and um, it says in effect the photon capture, which is three times the size of the event horizon. So what we can say from here is that if, so let's say the radius of the event horizon, if that is equal to r, then we know that the full radius that we want to resolve for this shadow is going to be 3r. And then we are told that we want to express the function in terms of the distance d and the mass m of the black hole. Okay, so we can say straight away that if we say resolve shadow, This suggests that we are going to use the angular resolution. So we're going to need angular resolution. Angular resolution. Can't seem to say that word correctly. <laughs> so angular angular resolution is needed. And for those of you that are new to watching this video, you don't have much uh, astronomy or astrophysics background, then the angular resolution basically refers to the smallest angle between two close objects that can be clearly seen as separate. So I'm going to write that down. So this refers to the smallest angle between two objects, should I say these are close objects, that can clearly be seen as separate. And from this we can say that the smaller the smaller the angle, the better the resolution. Now there's a very famous formula in astrophysics and it's for diffraction limited instruments and it basically gives you the formula of, of angular resolution. So what we have is for a diffraction, diffraction limited instrument, the angular resolution is bounded by, so let's say we have two objects that are quite close to each other and we have, this is where we are, we're looking at this. This in here is given by the angle theta. These are the two close objects and theta is given by the very famous equation which is 1.22 lambda over d. Now lambda here is the wavelength and if you recall that was given in the question so we know that this was it 1.3 millimeters okay and then d here is the diameter of the instrument. So we can see straight away that the question itself says how large an instrument would be needed to resolve the shadow and that means that we are wanting to find this d value here and rewrite it in terms of the distance d and the mass m 
as told in the question. Okay, perfect. Now I'm not gonna be going into the detail on why this equation is like this. If you'd like me to, I'll make a separate video on it, but just know that this holds, this is the equation for the angular resolution for a diffraction limited instrument, and it's what we're gonna to use today to help us get to the answer. So I'm just gonna make that a little bit smaller so we can fit some more notation in here. Perfect. So we have this. Now what we want to do is we want to relate this formula to the distance and somehow to the mass as well because we're told we want to get an answer in terms of the distance and the mass. Now what we can consider is something known as the angular size. So say I am stood here and I'm observing some object in the distance and from where I'm observing it it covers an angle alpha so we'll call this angle here alpha. Now for this example, we're wanting to resolve the shadow. So this in itself would be two R, two times the radius, also known as the diameter, but for simplicity is two times the radius. We've already said that the radius is gonna be three times the radius of the event horizon. So we'll just keep big R as the notation there, because this is the range that we're gonna be wanting to look at it within to resolve the shadow. We can say quite simply that by trigonometry, tri trigonometry, <laughs> excuse me, that tan alpha is the same as 2r divided by d, and I should just say that this is d here. Okay, so this is the distance to the object, this is the angular size alpha, and then we have the object itself and two times the radius of it, and simply just by trigonometry, we can find that tan alpha equals 2r divided by d. Now by the small angle formula, we basically get that alpha approximates to 2r divided by d, and that is a small angle formula. So we have alpha and we have theta. Now it's given, and it is typical, that alpha is greater than or equal to theta. And this makes sense when you compare this scenario here versus this scenario here. Okay, so we know that this is given, so we can rewrite these equations here. So we can say, okay, well, that means that 2r divided by d is greater than or equal to 1.2 lambda divided by d. And again, we're wanting this, we're wanting d, so we can rewrite this in terms of d, and we find that d must be greater than or equal to 1.22 lambda d divided by 2r, and that's just rearranging here. Now, all that's left to do is we're wanting to relate this to the mass as well, because we're told that in the question. We want the distance, which we, we've got here, but we also want the mass. Now, we can do this by noting what this r is here. Okay, so it's quite simple, really. When we're considering black holes, we can say that the radius of the event horizon, so let's say we have, this is the, the event horizon here, and we know that the radius of the event horizon is r, we know that at the event horizon, the escape velocity is equal to the speed of light. So we can say that this escape velocity here, v esc, so the escape, is the same as the speed of light. Now, we also know that the escape velocity can be written as this formula here. And again, I'm not gonna go into how you can derive this, it's, it's very simple mathematics, if you'd like a video on it I'll, I'll make it, but this is given by a very general formula here and it's the formula for escape velocity. We know that the escape velocity squared is given by this formula here, but we also know that the escape velocity equals the speed of light, so this can equal c squared, and if we just rearrange this here we can get an equation for r. So this gives us that r is 2gm divided by c squared, okay. But that is the radius of the event horizon, and if you remember at the start of the video, when I wrote down that if we had that the radius of the event horizon was r, then the radius that we want to resolve is three times that. So we can say that by this, that implies that big R is six gm over c squared, and that's because we've multiplied r here by three. Perfect. So all that's left to do is substitute our value for r into here, 
and we find that d is greater than or equal to 1.22 c squared lambda d 12 gn. And that is the answer to part a. Okay, perfect. So we've written it in terms of d and in terms of m. Now something to note that I didn't actually mention is this radius here is actually what is known as the Schwarz did I spell that right? I think I did Schwarz, Schwarz child radius uh, and that's typical when we think of black holes. Um, apologies if I if I pronounce that incorrectly but that is the answer to this question. Yeah really really nice part A. Now we're going to move on to part B which is basically just substituting values into here and, and getting some values out. And it's quite nice actually, it's quite a, visually uh, it's quite nice because we just plug in some values and we find out how large an instrument has to be to, to capture, uh, to resolve this shadow. And yeah, it turns out it's pretty big. Now for the sake of the video, I have just inputted uh, the answers here just because uh, it would take quite a while for me to go through and, and write all of these out. So this question asks to give the size of the instrument in units of earth radius. So we know that it's going to have to be an R radius of the earth. And we can do it for I and I, I, which are a supermassive black hole in the centre of M87. So we just substitute in the distance here and the mass here. So we have that lambda is given in the question, which is 1.3 millimetres. We have D in light years, so we'll have to convert that. We have the mass, which is in the mass of the sun, which is okay. We know what the mass of the sun is. We know what G is. We know what the speed of light is. We know what the mass of the sun is. And this is the equivalent of a light year. Again, I've written this out very long. I could have just done it times 10 to the, you know, some value. Um, but I've just kept it like that just for anyone who is new to watching these videos. Um, and yeah, all we do is we substitute the values into this equation here, which is all of this here. Now, obviously it's not quite as simple as just substituting these values in. We have to make sure that the units match. And I've just noticed that that should have a kilometre on it there. Um, so yeah, when we do this here, the units do in, indeed match and we get kilometres out front and we find that for the supermassive black hole in the centre of M87, the instrument would have to be 1.1 times the radius of the Earth, which, yeah, is massive. So, <laughs> crazy. Now, the, we can do the same for example two, um, and that is at the supermassive black hole of our own galaxy, Milky Way, and that's slightly less... Um, in size but still very very big and it's one times the radius of the earth and again we've just substituted some values into here note that there is a slight difference this distance is given in light years and this different difference is given in kiloparsecs um, so just note that there's a slight difference between those two questions there um, yeah awesome so that is the answer now the very final part of the question is a very quick question and all it says is, what type of technology is needed for the development of such an instrument? So this instrument here that would need to be this large for uh, to resolve the shadow of the black hole. And the answer is B, interferometry with an array of radio telescopes. It's basically a technique for improving angular resolution. You can essentially assemble many different telescopes and form a larger kind of virtual telescope and that allows for a sharper view than each of the telescopes individually. So it's basically kind of creating a, an ensemble, a collection of, of different telescopes and therefore by doing that you are creating a more uh, sharper view uh, for this, this telescope. Now with inferometry radio astronomers can combine the signals from many different antennas and telescopes and yeah, as I said, it creates a brighter and sharper image than what was possible for a single antenna dish. And that is what is needed to develop such an instrument. Perfect. So that is the very final part of the question. And that is the full question number three from the IOAA 2019 question three. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please like, subscribe and comment. And I'll see you all in the next one.